The earliest relations we have with the Franks are primarily in the diplomatic sphere. The Franks had pushed their own region north, conquered what the region we know as Saxony, and had gone even beyond the Elves into the Elbe River, into the area that was occupied by Slav peoples called Oberdrites and Hultsi, and that had brought them up into the area where the Danes were. What this means is that the diplomatic danger, perhaps, that was recognised by both Franks and the Danes on either side of the territories adjoining, then had to be conducted in ways where you see intermittent raids, you see treaties that are organised between Danes and Slavs, Danes and Saxons, and familiarity between Saxons and Danes that the Franks didn't really like. So there is primarily discussion that takes place, the occasional show of strength which worries people. But it's not really until 840 that you begin to get raids. One of the things that's very difficult for historians to determine, but they're pretty certain about it, is that most of the raids were opportunistic groups, bands of essentially raiding pirates, and that this is not something that can be identified as political attempts organised by the ruler back in Denmark to try and conquer Francia in any way at all. One thing that is also clear, and I mentioned Harold Clack earlier, is that some of the Danish rulers, or people who wanted to rule Denmark, would actually use Danish, Frankish support to see if that would actually assist them in their bids for power at home. So we're essentially dealing with two neighbouring, quite strong peoples, sufficiently strong, in fact, not ever to get conquered by the Franks, or even for the Franks to contemplate conquering them. The only efforts to go into Frankish, into Danish territory on the Franks' part are actually in the context of converting them. When we then have the raids, that also is not the only form of contact with the Franks, because we see in the Frankish annals that discuss all these raids lots and lots of other kinds of relationship that are established. There's political alliances between Danish chieftains and Franks, Frankish nobles or even Frankish rulers who want to use Danish military support to achieve political ends. We see also the Danes are actually hired as mercenaries, again in order to augment Frankish armies. We see the Danes, and sometimes Norwegians too, assisting the Bretons who are rebelling against Frankish attempts to conquer Breton territory. We can see individual Danes who conclude agreements with the Franks in order to assist them. We can see some intermarriage on these political and diplomatic levels. And then we can see the straightforward raids that are familiar from the stereotypes, the raids on monasteries, the raids on cathedrals and market towns, taking of people prisoner, ransoming abbots and bishops, and other takings away of property, gold, silver, horses and cattle and the like.